Do your car, a kitchen sponge and your mattress have anything in common? In fact, yes, they all heavily rely on flexible polyurethane foam. As do many other applications, ranging from the cushion that you sit on, the filter in your vacuum cleaner, your car seat, your gym mat, the hand grips of your bike. The list is virtually endless. Polyurethane foam is crucial to our daily comfort, without us hardly noticing or ever seeing it. But how is polyurethane foam made? Polyurethane foam is made by reacting disocyanates and polyols. Both these products are derived from crude oil. However, polyols may also be made of natural oils from renewable sources. When mixed, they react and foam. During the production process, isocyanates and polyols fully react and are not present in the foam that goes to market. While this may seem simple, the industrial process of foam production can be rather impressive. An average factory annually produces around 8,000 tonnes of foam. Now that represents a volume of nearly 265,000 cubic metres of foam. That's like water contained in 96 Olympic swimming pools. And this is only one plant. The EU's entire production of PU foam is enough to fill the Stade de France 10 times or construct nine great pyramids of Giza. Everything begins with the delivery of raw materials, which are delivered as liquids to on-site storage tanks. Individual substances are then pumped from these tanks to the production area via a closed pipe system. The whole process is computer controlled, so quantities are determined by the exact formulation of the foam to be produced. The mixing head is where the real production process begins. Isocyanates, polyols, pigments and other additives are mixed together in the mixing head. This is poured onto a rolling conveyor belt where it starts to foam. It forms a foam block along the conveyor belt. And because the foam production is a continuous process, any foam block being produced on the conveyor belt could, in theory, be endless. However, to make the conversion of foam in later stages easier, the long continuous block is cut into sections of up to 120 metres in length. Then it is cured and cooled for up to 24 hours before being transported to storage houses. At the storage house, the foam can be cut into short blocks, compressed and packed, and shipped to customers for use at their premises. Foam can be transformed on site into a variety of products. Most of the processing is mechanical, yet using high precision cutting equipment, foam can be given a virtually endless number of shapes. Blocks of up to 120 meters long can be cut into thin layers of foam with extreme precision right along all the length of the block. Cutting machines allow for precision cutting of smaller pieces. During this process, Foam can also be combined with other materials to make products ready for consumption, like kitchen sponges. Of course there's not just one type of foam. The variation in density, hardness and resilience is just about endless. It is the art of the foamer to adapt his formulation and production process to achieve the desired result. All through the production process, foam is tested for its conformity to requirements. It's important to know that a large number of foams produced for use in bedding and upholstered furniture are certified under CertiPure. This is a voluntary testing, analysis and certification programme for the environment, health and safety properties created by the European PU foam industry. It specifies substances that may not be used in foam production and sets stringent maximum limits for some components thus assuring consumers that the products they purchase are safe. Polyurethane foam, essential for comfort.